In episode four, there are 104 players left after the game. And when they arrive back, they're all excited because they find friends that survived. For Seung, he does think that maybe Song Woo had a little bit of an idea of what was going on. But you know what? It's water under the bridge. They all got through this thing together. It's okay. The next morning, though, is when things really start to get interesting. Because the next morning for breakfast, all that's available is one egg and water. For most of the contestants, they're not happy about that. That's not nearly enough. And that's when contestant 212 has an idea. She tells contestant 101, why don't we just skip the line? We'll get more food. No one's going to stop us. We have kind of a group of people. What's anyone going to say? So they do that. And there is one woman who kind of pipes up about it, but contestant 101, the kingpin thug, he tells her to shut up or she'll pay. And they get food. The problem is there was only enough food for everybody, which means that when that group cut the line, it left about five or six people without a meal. The workers, they really don't care. They explain the situation. We had enough for everybody. I don't know what to tell you. And that's when the one woman who piped up the first time says, I'll tell you what happened. Those people over there, they stole your food. Then it's a little embarrassing for 101 and his group, but he owns it. He doesn't really care. He doesn't see the big deal about it. And when one of the guys who didn't get food comes up to confront him about this, 101 doesn't really see this person as a threat because they're smaller than him. A little bit of entanglement ensues. And the glass bottle of water that everybody was given falls to the ground and it shatters. That's when 101 just loses it. He starts beating on this poor guy, kicking him. Everybody watching, nobody doing a thing, until finally 101 stops. But it's too late. The guy died. Seung starts screaming for someone to do something, the workers, anybody. But no one's saying a word. And that's when the announcement gets made that contestant 271 has been eliminated. And more money gets added to the pot. And it's a nice reminder for everybody that they're there to play a game. And the less contestants, the better. But there was one contestant that missed all of this. And it's contestant 111. He's definitely been getting preferential treatment, but that's because 111 is a doctor. And some of the workers have decided that with all these dead bodies, they shouldn't just cremate them. Not if there are good organs in there. They're going to steal the organs and sell them on the black market. But in order to do that, they need a doctor and they need a guy like 111. So they've been giving him preferential treatment. They've been giving him hints as to what the games are. They've been giving him more food to keep him alive. But the return is that when they need him, they get him. So while everybody was watching this poor guy get the crap beat out of him because people stole food, 111, he was busy harvesting organs. One of the workers that's actually supposed to get the organs off the island is Jun Ho. Of course, he doesn't know that. So when he doesn't show up for the organs, it does raise some concerns with a couple of the other workers. But all 111 cares about is finding out what the next game is. The group hands him an egg. They do give him a warning, though. The game isn't his only concern. He needs to make sure that he survives the night. Because they gave everybody less food on purpose. They knew that it would cause an uproar with the contestants. And they knew that that night, violence would ensue. There would be an outbreak of violence, and the doctor needs to survive. So, yeah, they give him the egg, and there is a hint as to what the game will be. It's going to be tug-of-war, but his big concern at this point is surviving. So when he gets back to the barracks, he needs to find people to align with, and he decides to join 101's group. Now, first, they have no interest in letting him join, especially contestant 212. She is really, really chesty about it. Even when he brings up that he's a doctor, they don't care. How does that help them? So he lets them in on the fact that he knows what the next game is going to be. And that little secret does get him entrance into their group. And it's a good thing because 101 has decided to seek out vengeance against the girl that ratted him out that night. When lights go out, he's going to go after her. But everybody kind of has an idea that something's going down that night. For Seong and his group, they have a feeling too, so they know they need to band together to kind of stay safe. 
problem is most people don't trust each other yet. They don't know each other that well, especially for the thief. As far as she's concerned, it's still every man for himself. And for the most part, everybody with that philosophy ends up dying that night. When the lights go out, all hell breaks loose. People are murdered left and right. And at one point, it looks like the thief is going to be one of them, but she's saved by Xiong. All of this, by the way, is being watched by the front man. He knew what was coming. In fact, he had workers ready by the door to burst in and stop it. One of those workers was Jun Ho. He saw everybody lining up, and he decided to be one of them to see what was going on. So while all this madness is breaking out, there's people there to stop it, but they're just waiting word from the front man. And after enough death and destruction, he finally gives the order, they go in, and they stop everything. They have all the contestants put their arms up, they check them for weapons, any weapons they do find they take. But Jun Ho uses this as an opportunity to walk up to Siung and ask if he knows where his brother is. He uses his brother's real name, but doesn't matter anyway. Siung has no idea what the guy's talking about. When it's all said and done, about 30 people die. Because of this skirmish, factions have definitely formed. For Siung and his group, he decides if they're going to be a team, they might as well get to know each other. So they start going around and offering up names. And while the thief thinks it's stupid, she does reveal that her name is Xiao Biak. Unfortunately, the old man, he can't remember his name. The other group, across the barracks, 101's group, the people that started this, well, they're actually really relieved that they have a doctor on their side now because he stitches the wounded up. For contestant 212, she realizes that 101, while he's a jackass and a douchebag, he's a very powerful ally. So she decides to seduce him. She sleeps with him in the bathroom, and she makes him promise that it'll be them in the end. They're going to work as a team. That's not going to last long, though. The next morning, everybody gets word that the next game will start soon, and they have to break out into groups of 10. For contestant 101, thanks to the doctor's tip, he knows that they're going to need a bunch of men. A woman like 212, she's not going to help him in this game. So he gives word to one of his cronies, go find the strongest guys here. Get them on our team. For Siong and his group, they start to strategize. They don't know what the game is, but Song Wu says, we already have a girl and an older guy. I'm thinking we need more men. It's sexist and ageist, but as he points out, it's our lives we're betting on. So he sends everybody out to go find one person and bring them back. Sabiak, she doesn't listen. She brings back another girl named Ji Young. Everybody else, though, does their part. They bring back somebody except the old man. He couldn't find anybody, which means they only have nine. And that's when their 10th teammate shows up. It's contestant 212. She couldn't believe that right after sleeping with her and promising her that they would work together to get to the end, 101 just kicked her to the curb. But such is life in the squid game. With nowhere else to turn... Seung's group was it. And it's not like they want to play with her. Nobody likes 212. She's arrogant for literally no reason. She's pretty much useless, but they only have nine and time's up. So they don't have a choice. All the teams head into the game area, and that's when they find out that the game is going to be tug of war. For Seung, and especially Sang Woo, they feel like their team's screwed. They've got three girls and a guy that's pushing 90. Tug of war is probably not their game. The first game is matched up, and it is 101's group, and they easily win and they move on. The next group is Seung's. But little do they know that that old man is a ringer when it comes to tug of war. He knows all the tricks. As they head up the elevator to actually play it, he lets them know that he used to play this as a kid, and he was able to formulate this great strategy that would beat stronger teams. For instance, you don't all line up on the same side. One on the left, one on the right, one on the left, one on the right. You also all have to be facing forward. You need your weaker players in the middle, your stronger players in the back, somebody up front to set the pace. But the most important thing is when the game starts, everybody arch their back. Look up to the ceiling. Wait the other team out. 
They'll get frustrated, and that's when you make your move. For Seung and his team, they start to do this, and it starts to work. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.